ground up here is a mound of earth left over from when I built the shed. All of the earth from where the shed is standing, this workshop is standing, is distributed around the garden and I'm raising the level here and you can see, here, see me here digging out the uh, weeds and the grass that have taken root over the last three or four years on this mound of earth. Uh, that, uh, that's one of the very large dandelions. I've been trying to get their roots right out so they don't come back again. I, I like dandelions in the grass where the bees can get them. I was watching bees today eating off the dandelions, but I don't really want them in the garden bit. Uh, that one broke off, so there's me trying to scrabble around and get the, the root itself and pull it out. And I uh, haven't got it here, there then. You can see the stones down there at the side there, that's the stones. They were in the front garden and I brought them round to the back and I'm using them to build, use them to build the wall. I may build another little wall a little bit farther along just to create the other end of the, uh, the raised part, the banked up bit that I'm, I'm going to make where I'm going to put all of my soft fruit. I did get this out eventually, but uh, it was quite hard work. <laughs> and there it is. Uh, a nasty dandelion root. That, uh <laughs> right, so I'm... I'm Things like dandelion roots, I'm getting rid of those completely from the garden. Uh, but all of the other stuff, uh, I'm putting in the compost heap, and you'll see that a bit later on. Pushing the earth back in again. <laughs> These are the two bins I've used. A bucket for the little bits of root, and uh, a larger bin for all the grass. Now you'll see me taking taking all of the grass up to my compost bins to put in the compost bins. I put everything in there, hedge clippings, grass cuttings, all my organic kitchen refuse goes in there absolutely everything. Hedge clippings just rot down to earth. It's wonderful. The stuff I get out of it. I like compost. It's good stuff. And it's raised level and improved the quality of the soil in the garden, which is pretty good soil anyway. I built the lids. I built the compost bins with my friend's help, Adam. He helped me with the uh, block laying because I'm not very good at that kind of stuff and he's got lots of experience of doing it. Here I go, can you see this little mound of earth running along that I'm walking beside now? That's more of the earth that was left over from me building the workshop. In fact, the whole of that raised section there has been raised up with earth from building the workshop. Um, it's really changed the uh, nature of the, the ground at the garden there. So it's really nice, quite nice soil, quite loose, and the, uh, with plenty of weeds on the top, so, but uh, they're easy enough to get rid of. And uh, I'm going to move all of that soil in that ridge there along down here. It'll be about where we are now. That's the back of the garage behind where, I, where I'm digging. And uh, beyond that is the house, minus the second one there. This was hard work, all of this. <laughs> I'm not really used to hard work anymore. 
it's a shame. I get very tired very quickly. So I uh, stop for frequent rests. Evidence there. Teacup and plate from cake and tea. I brought all that soil round and uh, as you see tipped it onto the area so raise the level here I want to I, really the soil level needs to be four inches about 100 millimeters above the top of the stones to make it level with the bottom edge of the path the path where I'm standing now. Now, I had to uh, get rid of all the weeds that I brought with that pile of soil. As you can see, it's really nice for loose soil, so it was really easy to get hold of the weeds and get them out of it. And there aren't that many there, actually. I haven't got a chance to establish themselves because the pile I brought that from uh, I moved last year and I actually created that that little terrace terrace section with the slope last year and uh, put, left the pile of soil on the top having levelled it off as far as possible you can see at the back there running towards the towards the compost bins there's a pile there that's also soil that was left over I've moved that already from the big pile and uh, my plan there is to level that as well. I need to put a retaining wall of slabs along behind the shed. And then uh, I shall grow stuff there, possibly move rhubarb and things like that to there. I did think about having some beehives, but uh, I'm not sure about that. So what I had to do then, as you can see, I'm levelling that off, moving the soil to to try and get it up. I don't want to, I can't have the mound of soil moving too far this way because it'll engulf the soft fruit bushes. These ones between the camera and me, those are black currant bushes which produce lots of lovely black currants um, and not really visible because it's hidden behind one of the current, black currant bushes is a, um, a gooseberry bush, uh, although that seems to have a bit of a problem with gooseberry sawfly. Anyway, it does produce some nice gooseberries, so I, in fact I have, I've had gooseberry pie this week from gooseberry that I, I'd uh, frozen, that I'd collected from, my, from that. So, so I had to rake the soil out as far as I could to try and get it level and also pull out any other little weeds because they keep appearing. <laughs> weeds! They hide under the soil. I'm sure they do it on purpose. But, uh, this was fun. I enjoyed doing this. And I enjoyed doing this garden. This, this is the first really serious gardening I've done for ages. Um, building the workshop really took everything over. The mark you can see there is eight feet away from the shed, and that's the where that's where I'm going to plant my little walnut tree seedling. So I dug this out, and in the bucket is compost, just general purpose compost from a sack in the shed, and uh, I shall dig that in. Unfortunately, while I was doing this, there was a bleep which told me that the uh, memory was full. I swapped memory cards. <coughs> Unfortunately, the new memory card was only a little one, so it only lasted, well, lasted less than two minutes. But uh, here I am digging in the compost into the soil, finding more weeds. <laughs> so many weeds. Digging it in, I want to give the tree the 
the best chance it can have. The roots need a really nice environment that they can enter really easily. So this is really important. I really hope this tree grows here and succeeds. I've grown it from seed, a walnut. I like the idea that in a few years time there'll be a walnut tree here. I suspect I'll never see walnuts on it, but nice that someone might. And here I am with the little tree. Tip the rest of the compost in. Get the depth right. I watered the tree in its pot earlier so it's ready to plant, so just slide it out really easily there. And that's where it ran out of memory again. Well, I finished putting it in. I didn't realise that the memory had run out. Well, I sort of suspected it had, but I wanted to get the tree into the ground, panicking a bit. So here I am treading it in. Well, it needs to be really well pushed into the ground. And then, water. Plenty of water. Really needs to be well watered in so that the soils run up against its root ball. And then uh, I went round the side of the shed there, got the rake as you can see, and just smoothing the soil off over, filling in the depression round the tree. It looks neat, but I also think it's good for the tree that the soil should be there like that and uh, tamp down again. I like tamping down like that, it's fun. I like the little patterns that the fork tines, that the uh, rake tines make on the soil. Let's see them there, little parallel patterns. I'm recording this two days after I actually uh, did this job and the leaf at the top of that stem is already coming out. Plenty of water. The ground is so dry. It, it still is. I've been digging today. And there are the walnut shells. There are the walnut shells. I've <laughs> a great feeling of affection for them when I took them away from it. I mean, they're, 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 as far as it's concerned, they don't really matter anymore. But I couldn't bring myself... I, I didn't know what to do. Wave my hand there. What should I do? Put them in my pocket? And... and uh, loath to throw it away. Just hope this tree survives. There's a nice little green shoot. Should be good. I hope you heard that. That's me speaking to the camera then. And the next part of this is me talking to you while carrying the camera around so you can see what's going on in the garden. Here's a little walk around the garden. I need to get you. That's it. Here's the tree. Around here is the shed. That's my workshop. Down there is uh, Hell's Kitchen. Used to be a nice patio. It will be again eventually. That's my pig shed. Earlier you saw me Over here, this is my two bin compost heap. See, this is the bin I'm empty, I'm filling now. The other one is empty, it's full, so it's topped right up to the top. So there you go, that's what it's like inside. I'll come back and tie that up later. That's around the back of the shed there. Another Hell's Kitchen. Up here, heading up towards the house. There used to be a plum tree here, but it was full of fungus and rot, so I cut it down and I'll dig it up. I'm going to bring the level of that over there. 
this way and have all of my soft fruit here which will include these here raspberries blueberries gooseberries these piles of earth here have got to be moved over to where I've just planted the tree to extend that level out and this little tree here can we see it? This is the, one of the yew trees that I planted last week. I planted the others in the front. You can see it's got nice green shoots, so it seems to like its new place. I hope so, because it's my favourite kind of tree. And that tree I planted as a seed maybe 11 years ago. You see how slowly they grow. I will never see that, the big tree. Hopefully, whoever has this house after me will keep it and let it grow. Over here I have more trees. In the pots down here, these pots here, these are more walnut trees. Up here these are all yew seedlings but they're not doing very well I'm afraid. I've not really looked after them as well as I might. And that's it really. That seat belonged to my parents. It was at their house and after they died I had it and brought it here. And this is my workshop that I built. This is where all that soil came from, the piles of soil. Here's my little lathe. my little lathe, little Chinese lathe. It's a jolly good little lathe, it is too. I'm still learning and I will always be learning how to use it. This is my mill. I only got this last year. Unfortunately, the uh, this pillar here is tilting forward slightly so that over about 45 millimeters front to back, it drops down 2.0.027 millimetres. That's just over a thousandth of an inch. And it's noticeable when you're using the mill for large pieces of metal. That way, it's upright because I've made it upright. So I have to uh, shim down at the bottom here to bring this upright. All my tools here, tools at the end there. Bench I made when I first moved here. I'm still building it, you can see. The drilling machine I was given. This was a three phase drilling machine, but I had to swap the motor for a single phase motor because I don't have three phase in here. I've still got the three phase motor. Jolly good old machine that is too. So there you are. That's it. That's a fig tree. It has a sibling here. That's its sibling there. Those are grown from cuttings I took from my fig tree in Bristol. The bay tree is taken, it's grown from a cutting I took from my bay tree in Bristol. It's growing really well. And that's really all you're going to get for now. I need to go indoors and somehow or other learn how to edit these.